you. Great to be here. I'm kind of smiling inside as I'm thinking about the first time I spoke at Manuel Chapel. It was about 1981, and it wasn't in this building. It was an old chapel that was about where the where that lawn is or the science building, and that is. And uh, it was a really kind of a dark, long building, and the seniors would sit in back. And I was a young pastor coming out of Fresno to speak, and it was like the seniors were back there saying, you know, throwing spit wads and like, just try to grab my attention, you know. It was, it was challenging. And here you guys are right up front just like, speak to me, right? All right. I like that. And so it's good to be here. Hey, I am um, finishing, not, not quitting ministry, but I'm finishing 35 years of what we call senior leadership, senior pastorate. And, and so it's a time for a lot of reflecting for me, thinking about what I've learned if I've learned anything, I've, I've learned that I have still have a lot to learn. And I just, I want to challenge you, this isn't the main thing I want to say this morning, but, but if in any way, if you can be lifelong learners, just keep learning, learning, learning. Uh, you live at this great time in, in history, you know, when information keeps, uh, you know, doubling every few years, when, uh, when there's just so much information at your, at your fingertips. And uh, it's a great time to be alive, and I'm, I'm thankful to, to, be, to be living in this age as well. If I would give my talk a title today, it would be, What is Your Why? It's kind of a weird question in a way, maybe, uh, and I want to come back around to that later at the end. I think you'll understand what I'm, what I'm referring to about that. But the question is, what is your why? And so I'm going to get to that by taking a little bit of an unusual route and uh, I was asked to speak on a, a text from the scriptures that kind of will set up that chapel tomorrow when, those, when that international qu children's choir comes. Uh, kids from all walks of life, kids who've probably been, been uh, damaged in some way as orphans or whatever. And so uh, part of what I'm going to say at the beginning is to set that up. And, and here's a text that I want to look at with you for just a few minutes. And we're gonna, it's going to take us on a little different route. Those of you who uh, are taking speech or whatever, you know, uh, th this is kind of a, uh, a little route I'm, I'm gonna, I want you to follow with me. So we're going to start at a little different place and end up with this question, what is your why? And the text is from Matthew 18, it's verses 1 through 5, and uh, it reads like this. I think it'll be on the screens. And uh, in just a moment, there we go. It's nice to know I'm not alone at that time. There we go. All right. Uh, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus, so his closest followers, those 12 disciples, and they asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And here's helping us think about tomorrow a little bit. He called Jesus, called the little child, and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So that's Jesus' answer, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. So that's what we get to do tomorrow. We get to welcome, uh, Mr. Knox said, let's, let's uh, plan to give them a good welcome. Whoever welcomes a little child in my name welcomes me. But uh, here's what I want you to think about with me. I don't know if any of you are taking psychology or have already, but something that psychologists and sociologists are trying to always figure out is something called the human condition. What is it that, what is it that makes us human? What makes humans so human? Um, what, is it, what is the human condition that, that crosses? You know, it doesn't matter what culture you come from. It doesn't matter what country you live in. Uh, what society you're raised in, but, but because you're human, you have this, this condition, or we could call it a problem or something like that. What is the human condition? And one of those, the, the, our text that we just re looked at, shows us that one of those is that we're constantly trying to up ourselves, be better than the next person. It's a kind of a spirit of competition that we're born with, something uh, that I kind of... It's, it's a sense that I, if I can like, maybe put you down, it'll, it'll elevate me a little bit. Or if I can raise myself up a little bit above you, it'll, it'll lower you. That, that idea. What is it that makes me better than the next person? Who is the greatest? And so we see this in all of, all of society. When countries 
get all wrapped up in that, it ends up in a war. When homeowners uh, are concerned about that, it ends up in lawsuits. When schools are want to know who's the greatest, it ends up in, uh, you know, uh, in inter-school rivalries. When teams want to say who's the best, it ends up in things like we saw last night. I don't know how many of you, I'm really kind of into basketball, especially in NCAA basketball. And so if you, the national championship game last night was, was one of those games for the ages that's going to be shown for a long, long time. So here it's Villanova and North Carolina coming down. Uh, um, it's 13.7 seconds, I think, 13.4 seconds um, Carolina's behind by three points. They bring the ball down, and uh, Marcus Payne gets the ball. He goes up in the air at about 30 feet. He has to double clutch, and he nails a three-pointer to tie the game. So they call timeout. Still can't figure out who called timeout. But anyway, it's 4.7 seconds. Now Villanova has the ball. They have to go the length of the court. They inbound it. Uh, <coughs> Archie Diacono takes it up the side. He cuts across almost like a, like a football play. He kind of hands it off to a guy named Jennings who goes in and shoots a 25-foot three-pointer, drains it to win the game. So who's best? Who is the greatest? You know? So North Carolina is in their, in their locker room crying and sobbing and just totally dejected. And Jenkins is running around the court like this. I am the greatest. You know? that, that's, that's the human condition. It's what you feel when, when you have, uh, when there's sibling rivalries within your families or, or when there's jealousies that, that pop and suddenly, uh, pop up and suddenly you, this person that you thought was your friend has suddenly dissed you or you feel rejected and, and there's this brokenness that you feel in your heart. Now evidently this question has been around for a long time because the disciples came to Jesus and they said, who is the greatest? Now they say, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? There, in, a, in a couple of chapters, we'll find out that they really want to know who's the greatest among them. It's like one of you going to class someday and saying, hey, teacher, who's the, who's the greatest, who's the best student in the class? Or, uh, uh, you know, here's this team, uh, the coach has been working with them all season, and all of a sudden one guy says, hey, coach, do you think I'm the greatest player on this team? And so here's his disciples. Uh, a couple of chapters later, Jesus found them arguing about who was the greatest. And so... That's a phrase that, this phrase, who's greatest in the kingdom of heaven, describes the, the people of God, people who are followers of God, believers. And these guys want to know who is the greatest um, when you're talking about being a follower of, of Jesus. And Jesus, as the master teacher, turns the question upside down. If you, if you study Jesus, you'll, know, you'll learn that he almost always does that. That he turns things upside down, that, that being part of the kingdom of heaven is kind of an upside down approach to life. It kind of cuts against the grain of what the way we tend to look at things. And so Jesus turns that upside down and he points to a little child. He says, come here. Puts it, has a child, like imagine him standing next to him, Jesus' hand on his shoulder. And he points at this child and he says, look at this child. If you want to be great in my kingdom... You want to be great as a follower of, of Jesus, as one of my followers, then you, there's something about this child that you need to learn. There's something or some things about this child that, that are, are the example of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. When you look back at the text that, I, that we read earlier um, in Matthew, Jesus isn't saying that to be great you have to have some phenomenal kind of skill. Did you catch that? You don't have to have a super talent. You don't have to be a Titus who can shoot basketballs from, you know, 30 feet in the air or anything like that. He's saying that greatness in the kingdom of God is a matter of heart, a matter of the heart. One thing I noticed as I've been watching that show about these kids, it's called Little Big Shots, is that the kids seem to all have a few things in common. I think you saw it there in this little guy, this little Titus. Uh, they are excited, just excited about life, just excited to be there. They love what they do. They, they take life as it comes. It seems like they just take one day at a time, and they just live for that moment. Uh, they're very trusting. You know, Steve Harvey is, you know, I know he is at, you know, maybe faking a little bit. But the little guy wasn't afraid at all. He trusted 
those adults, he trusted Harvey completely. And they just seemed to do their best for the sheer joy of doing it. And as I think of those qualities, I think that's part of what Jesus was saying. If you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, be like a little child. Be like a child. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I hear Jesus saying something like this, that, that any one of us can actually be the greatest. I think Jesus actually, while he uses the word greatest, I think the meaning there is actually greatness. And that you can be the greatest, and you can be the greatest, and you can be the greatest. If you humble yourself like a child and follow Jesus in that way, Jesus really is defining greatest to be greatness. He says, if you'll follow me and if you'll walk in my ways, that that's what you're going ex- to experience. You're going to experience the greatness that comes in being one, one who follows me. The, the kingdom of heaven, he's saying, the kingdom of God is not reserved for one person or for one winner or for one champion who will finally be crowned the greatest at the end of the season or at the end of life. But Jesus is redefining that so it's within grasp of every one of us. This is where I want to shift our thinking a little bit from this idea now of what it means to be great in the kingdom of heaven and, and to, to deal with this human condition of always wanting to be the best and, and, uh, and the competition that we live with to, to this question of what, is it, what does it mean to live with your why instead of only with your what. The difference between great in life And great in the kingdom is the difference between living for your what and living for your why. Let me explain that a little bit. First of all, you need to know that I I love following you guys in everything you do here. I come to almost every musical performance. I come to every drama performance. I come to tons of your sport sporting events, and so I watch you. And I and this has been one of the great years in Emmanuel history when it comes to. All kinds of competition. You guys are great. You're fantastic. You're successful. I mean, you have champions, you know, foot in football and basketball, and now you're baseball and swimming, and there's soccer, FFA, and you just keep going on. There's individual awards that so many of you are getting. It's, it's just outstanding in, in every area, academics, the arts, uh, every one of those areas. And I commend you for it, and I, I love watching you because I... That was my life when I was your age as well. But if you have pursued all those things only for the what of it, only for yourself, only so that you can be the greatest, I want to just remind you that some of all, most of that, that part of it is going to fade away. I know I'm kind of an, one of the older guys that's going to speak to you this year. But I had tons of trophies and medals myself for many, many years, and I drug them around as I moved from place to place across the country. And, and finally, I just, I just gave them away. I gave them to youth groups to recycle them for, for fun and games. And I, I kept about four of, of my awards that kind of stand out for me. The rest of them, they just got faded and tarnished. And, and that's the way these things, if you're just doing it for yourself and for, for your personal achievement, it's gonna, I want to remind you, it's great. Keep doing it. Keep being the best that you can be, but it's going to fade away someday, okay? And that's where this why comes in. That's where I want to challenge you to, to, to live not only for the what, not only to be the best in life, but for the why. What is your why? So I want to show you one other little clip here that I that we used in our uh, church staff meeting a few uh, months ago. Um, I hope it inspires you to live for your why and not just for your what. It's uh, there's a comedian named Michael Jr. And this is a little clip of something he did. I, I hope it helps you understand the difference between your what and your why. God, how do I know? And a lot of times when people hear the phrase, how do I know, the next thing they say is what? How do I know what? But the key really isn't to know what. The key is to know why. Because when you know your why, you have options on what your what can be. For instance, my why is to inspire people to walk in purpose. My what is stand-up comedy. My what is writing books. My what can be going out with some friends to eat. In fact, another what 
that has moved me towards my why is a, a web series that we have out now called Break Time. So every Wednesday at 3 o'clock, you should subscribe to the, to the channel. Uh, we do a series called Break Time on YouTube. So 3 o'clock, we drop a new episode. One episode in particular I'm about to show you a clip to. We were in, uh, we were in Winston-Salem. So Break Time, this is how it works. I travel the country. I do stand-up comedy probably an hour, hour and a half at an event. And in the middle of my show, I'll just sit down and start talking to the audience. And funny just happens. Or I'll meet somebody who's really interesting. So I met this one guy, and he said that he teaches music at a school. I was like, all right, you teach music, you know, um, can you sing? And then uh, I'm just going to show you the clip. Check it. So you're a musical director. Cool. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let, me get a couple, let me get a couple bars of, like, uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that? Go ahead. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Wow. That bro could sing. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Uh, now, what you give me the version is if uh, your uncle just got out of jail, you got shot in the back when you was a kid. I'm just saying, let me see the hood version real quick. If you know which version I'm talking about, just see if that exists. Let me see what you got. Uh, amazing grace. Ah. So here's the thing. The first time I asked him to sing, he knew what he was doing. The second time I asked him to sing, he knew why he was doing it. When you know your why, your what has more impact because you're walking in or towards your purpose. So that's a challenge I want to leave you guys with this morning. You are incredibly blessed students in this place. You have amazing talents and opportunities, and your what is outstanding in so many areas. In the kingdom of heaven, every one of you has the pos potential to, for greatness. If you approach God and his son Jesus as a child, just humility, say, God, here I am. I am yours, and without you, I am nothing. So show me, God, the why of what you want me, why you have me on this earth. Why, why am I here in any way? Why do I exist? And if you can grab that, if you can grab hold of it and live for that question and live for Christ in that way, it will change the way you come to chapel. It will change the way you do your math. It will change the way you write your speeches. It will change the way you lead worship. It will change the way you prepare for that next ball game, that next whatever. And so my challenge this morning is to, to remind you that God has given each one of you a why in your life. Seize it. For one, his why, his purpose for you is that you might know him. And that as in knowing him, you might make him known. You can live the rest of your life on that one phrase. And it, it will give you purpose and meaning for every day of your life. To know Christ and to make him known. And you can take that into everything. You don't have to change anything you're doing. 
unless it's illegal or immoral. But anything else, you can keep doing it because you can do it with a why that God has placed in your heart. And so that's my challenge to, to you today, to live for the why. What is your why? Uh, I'm going to stick around a little bit after chapel if anybody you'd, would like to talk about that. And maybe you're confused about life or about, you know, it just doesn't make sense and you'd like to just sit and talk or pray about that. I, I'd, I'd, be, I'd love to do that. And I'm sure you can get a pass to be late for class if you, if you need it. But let's end in prayer. God, thank you for these students in this amazing place. I thank you for the, the history of Emmanuel, but I also thank you for the future and the dreams that, that many people have for this place to continue to, to grow and thrive and impact uh, student lives. And then, God, I thank you for the present. Thank you that way back in time, you, in your infinite wisdom, you saw this moment in time. You knew who was going to be in this chapel. You knew that there would be students from all over this valley and from around the world that would be here today to, to hear this, this little simple talk about what it means to be great in the kingdom of God and to, to live out of a of an inner motivation of our why rather than just our what. That our real fulfillment doesn't come in, in putting others down. It comes in pleasing you and humbling ourselves and just saying, God, I am yours for all of eternity. Show me why I'm here. Show me how to live my what with a, with a purpose. So God, help us as we go into the rest of this day to, to have a, a greater reason to live and to do it with incredible joy like a child, help us to seize every moment, and we bless you in Jesus' name, amen.